Hi and welcome to today's headstand tutorial. I'm gonna run you through a few drills that might help you to improve your headstand, but also will show you a few different ways to access a headstand in case you're new to a headstand. Before we dive into it though, I just wanna talk a little bit about the headstand itself, because the setup is quite important to protect our neck and to make sure it stays safe and healthy. So even though it's called headstand, there's only really a third of your body weight actually held by your head and your neck. The other two thirds are held by your elbows and your forearms. So we try to create a perfect setup, a perfect triangle, and we really work with our shoulder plates and with our forearms pressing down into the ground. So there is a little bit of a lift that even maybe at some point, there might be hardly any weight in your head and you're just balancing on your forearms. To find the right setup, there are a few tricks, different tricks. Um, to find the perfect place where you want to place your head on the floor, you can use this one where you use your thumb and your pinky finger, place the thumb against your third eye, reach all the way over your head and see where the pinky lands. And this is normally where you want to place your head down, the ground of your head down. It's not necessarily really the center. It is a little bit forward towards your forehead, even though it feels a bit off once you place the head down, it will feel all right as soon as we start to walk the hips on top of our shoulders. It will make sense in a minute. The second thing is the right setup for your arms. So that we, in order that we can use our forearms and press ourselves out of our forearms and use our shoulders to keep the neck long, we want to have a perfect alignment of elbows underneath the shoulders. To find that alignment, it helps to bring wrist behind elbow and elbow behind wrist. Then place your forearms down like that. Don't move your elbows from here and then cup your hands into each other. So now I really have that perfect power line created with my joints and I'm safe to go up. I remember that point of the ground of my head. I place it down on the inside of my head and then I'll go up into my headstand. There are different ways. I like to interlace my fingers, but then the pinkies I put in front of each other so they are not um, crossed and there's not much pressure on them. And then also you don't want to place the head maybe completely in the cup of your hand. It's more like you imagine squeezing a tennis ball and then the head is placed in front of it. Just gives you more stability as well. Okay, let's move on to the first two drills I want to show you to get a feeling to push yourself out of your shoulders, even though once you're upside down, you can do scup um, push-ups. For this, come into a plank position, place your hands underneath your shoulders, pull your shoulder plates away from your ears, then keep your elbows straight, really lock them completely, press the heels away, lift your front body into your back body, curl your tailbone under, and then from here, drop your sternum, your chest bone down between your shoulders, and lift yourself back up high. So it's like a push-up, just that only your scaps, your scapula, your shoulder plates are doing the work. So I um, kind of protract and retract, but at the same time there is a depression happening. So I pull my shoulder plates down towards my back pockets as well. And this motion is the motion you want to then experience as well when you go upside down. Another important component of head standing is using the core muscles. So anything that helps you to wake up your core is good for a headstand. Here is one, <laughs> one you can do, come on your backside for that. Stretch your legs long, make sure that you press your lower back into the ground, reach with your arms over your head, interlace your fingers or press the palms of your hands together, lock your head in and then rock up and down and go for 10 or 20 rocks here pulling the belly button actively towards your spine and you should feel how the core of your core, the deep core muscles are really switching on and that is something you want to find when you go up into your hands, headstand. All right, shall we? Let's do it. So there are a few different ways. Um, I'm going to show you all the ways now. Um, Depending on your level where you are, there are easier ways that help to get up in there or more experienced, more advanced ways. So 
something we always want to avoid is just jumping up. We never want to do that. So yeah, let me show you a few versions how we can get up there without jumping. Regardless the version you pick, it's important that you always find that perfect setup we talked about, that you then lift your hips up high to the sky and you walk your toes that far in until your hips are stacked on top of your elbows. The first way I show you is accessing with a split. Lift one leg up high to the sky, find a pulling sensation from that leg all the way up towards the heavens and then maybe there is that shift of energy and the second leg starts to float up as well. Try one side and then the other. Way number two is entering with a half tuck. For that, walk your toes in again, then pull one heel up towards your sit bone, engage through your core, and then with strength, lift that second leg off the ground all the way up towards the sky. You can stay in that half tuck a little longer, really feeling into the strength of a headstand, and then extend that second leg up towards heavens as well. Next step is getting up into headstand with a full tuck. Both heels are pulling towards the sit bones at the same time. Core is on fire, lift them up. Then feel free to stay in that tuck just to get a feeling for that deep core engagement. Stay engaged through there and then lift both of your legs at the same time up towards the sky. Engage through your glutes, press through your elbows and forearms. Maybe you want to use your lowering down to develop that kind of strength. Child's pose afterwards, just to give yourself a little rest. The next version shows an entrance through a straddle. Walk your hips again on top of your elbows, but then step your feet wide. As good as possible, aligned with your elbows. With a strong core, start then to lift your legs over the side all the way up until your ankles close. To get out of it, split your legs again wide to the left, right, outside, and then lower your legs down with control and with strength. In our last version, we're gonna use the wall as an assistant. Sit against the wall with your legs straight. There where your hips land is where the crown of your head will be placed. Turn around, have that perfect setup, and then start to walk your hips on top of your elbows before you use the wall. Place then one foot against the wall and join in with the second foot. The legs are parallel to the floor. Get a feeling for the pressure on the crown of your head, the pressure in your elbows, and then start to lift one leg up towards the ceiling. Maybe the second leg joins in whenever you feel confident enough and you can balance. Maybe extend that leg up towards the ceiling as well and stay here for as long as you want. Slowly release your legs back down and then give yourself a little break in child's pose. Thank you very much for playing with me today. If you have any questions, just shoot.